Normally when I cover video games, I like to talk about as much as possible, how to play the game, the modes available, the matches available, all that stuff. I decided to download Action Arcade Wrestling in hopes of doing a similar deep dive, covering everything the game has to offer and letting you guys know if it's worth your time, money and effort. Unfortunately, Action Arcade Wrestling comes up a little short in regards to game modes, match variety and general things to do within the game. I do realise I'm very late to the party with this one, many of you guys may have played AAW when it was known as Shikara Action Arcade Wrestling and I can see it was covered quite a bit on YouTube when it first got released. When Shikara folded, the developer decided to remove the Shikara branding and add in fictional wrestlers to replace those who were previously under licence. So right now the game just kinda sits in the Steam store without a brand name to make it stand out. Still, I wanted to try something different. I began to play AAW and I quickly realised that this is a game that really relies upon community creations. It had, and still has, the potential to be the pro wrestling version of Mugen, but it seems like the player base may have dwindled significantly. I find this a little unfortunate because there's a lot of potential with action arcade wrestling, but I'll get into all that in today's video. Throughout this video though, I want you to keep in mind that this was all put together by a very small team. It was initially a crowdfunded project. AAW started life as an Indiegogo project. It's an indie game through and through. On the Indiegogo page, it says... One of the biggest goals David Horn, producer and creator of CAAW, has for the game isn't to make a better wrestling game than his competition, but to make something altogether different. I'm not one of those angry developers shaking his fist saying, we deserve a better wrestling game, I'll show you how it's done, quite the contrary, he said. I have nothing but respect for the awesome work 2K's doing, as well as the old N64 and PlayStation simulation wrestling games. I just want to make something different. David also stated he wanted to make the Go 2 wrestling arcade game that would complement the 2K games rather than compete with them. And personally, I think this is a good way to approach things. There's no point in promising the world to potential backers when you know it's not possible. So just by reading the Indiegogo page, we can see that David was realistic in what he hoped to achieve. Just over £21,000 was raised for the project, and eventually Shikara Action Arcade Wrestling was released for PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. Quick side note, I have nothing but respect for folks who see these kind of projects through until the very end. With things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, you're setting yourself up for a lifetime of abuse if you don't deliver what you promise. So fair play to the team for delivering on what they promised. We go to the title screen and then we go to the main menu. Everything's pretty colourful and you instantly notice the cell shaded art style of the wrestlers in the ring. I think this is a great choice for the game simply because not many other wrestling games use cell shaded graphics. I decided to check out the tutorial first of all seeing as this is a game I know absolutely nothing about and you quickly realise that yes this is an arcade style wrestling game through and through. You've got a strike button and a grapple button, you hold in the grapple button for stronger moves or you press both buttons down at the same time for a strong strike. Alternatively there's a button already mapped out for strike plus grapple. You can block strikes by walking away from your opponent, kind of like a typical fighting game like Street Fighter. And countering is non-existent, you only counter or reverse moves if your opponent tries to do the same move over and over again and this is also automatic. Get your opponent's health in the red zone to perform a finisher and that's it, you're good to go. Power ups appear as icons inside the ring which can give you stat boosts. This is similar to the WWF's In Your House game but AAW's system for power ups is handled way better. The boosters can be knocked out of your opponent under certain situations and they can also be spent to help your character get back to their feet after a knockdown. If you're not a fan of this, you can turn power ups off altogether when setting up a match. Loads of insane weapons are included in the game. You can even let the fans throw weapons into the ring if you like. So yeah, while it's pretty basic, there's enough things here that don't happen in other wrestling games so you can't complain really. Starting up a match, the first thing I notice is how important positioning is. You gotta learn exactly where you need to be to perform grapple moves and it's easy to be off by a few steps. 
Some move animations look a bit off too. Generally, most are okay, but I think we've just been spoiled by how good the animations are in modern games, and it makes games like this a bit more noticeable. But generally speaking, the gameplay is fine. I wouldn't say it's the greatest arcade experience, but it's not terrible by any means. You can tell without a doubt that it was made on a budget, but I also think that kinda adds to the charm of AAW. During a match, you'll also get little in-game missions known as spots. A spot gets called, and if you can pull it off in good time, you'll be awarded match points. Match points go towards your overall rank, and the more you rank up, the more stuff you'll unlock. Unlockables include new characters, new taunt animations, new custom belt designs, things like that. And, you know, just going back to the power-up system, the more I played it, the more I began liking it, even though I thought I'd hate it. Getting enough power-ups turns your character into an absolute beast, and if your opponents gained a lot of power-ups, then it can be quite fun stealing them away. So yeah, this is something I grew to like. Matches are over quite quickly in AAW. Matches are also fairly easy, even on the hardest difficulty setting. So it really is a pick up and play arcade game and you'll quickly have your mind made up about the game after only a few matches. As mentioned, the original Shikara roster has been completely replaced by fictional wrestlers. Guys like Biohazard, KFA13E or Kayfabe, I see what you did there. We've got other guys like Forsaken, Livewire, Rock and Ronnie. It kind of reminded me of playing Power Move Pro Wrestling on PS1, seeing as the roster in that game was also completely replaced with fictional nobodies, but it's just what happens when you have to remove a license. We have no attachment to the characters at all, we have no backstory, we don't know their signature moves until we pull them off, nothing. So let's fire up ChatGPT and let's get a backstory for old Hot J Tubbs here. Hot J Tubbs, a wrestler with a steamy twist, earned his nickname from a comical incident involving a hot tub. Before his wrestling days, Tubbs was an enthusiastic hot tub salesman, known for his over-the-top sales pitches. He claimed his hot tubs could withstand anything, a bold claim he decided to demonstrate at the local fair. Tubbs set up a hot tub and, to the amusement of the crowd, he decided to jump in from a ladder to show its durability. However, in a hilariously unexpected turn of events, he missed the tub and landed in a kiddie pool next door, splashing water all over the mare who happened to be passing by. This spectacle didn't dampen Tubbs' spirits, instead it sparked his wrestling career. Adopting the name Hot J Tubbs, he became famous for his entrance, where he would emerge from a cloud of steam wearing a robe adorned with pictures of hot tubs. His signature move, the boiling splash, involved him pretending to turn up the heat before launching himself at his opponents, mimicking the same leap that had landed him in the kiddie pool. The crowd would erupt in laughter each time, not just at his theatrics but also at the sight of his opponent's confused faces, trying to figure out if they were in a wrestling match or a comedy show. Unfortunately, we'll never get to see Hot J Tubbs' entrance because AAW doesn't have entrance animations for the wrestlers in the game. You start up a match and you're right there in the ring. As for the roster that remains in AAW, yeah, it's not great, is it? Again, the development team isn't to blame here and they did what they had to do when Shikara folded. You can't be too harsh here because this is the only way the game can really exist now. But don't fret, community creations to the rescue. Action Arcade Wrestling allows players to download characters online. These are all characters made by other players, and that means AAW also features a creation suite. Now, the creation suite is quite unusual, and it also kinda sucks for console players. Basically, you need to download an additional program from Steam named AAW Wrestle Lab to create wrestlers and arenas, and that also means if you don't have a PC, then you can't create stuff. My creation skills aren't good, and as I get older, my patience for such things just isn't where it needs to be. But the creator wrestler mode is quite interesting because you can add textures to every body part and you can also move and replace body parts to make, well, whatever you want really. I quickly downloaded a face texture, I stuck it on a mask, and this is what happened. <laughs> really, you need to learn about resolution and sizes for each part, and again, I've got no patience for it, but you can see the potential here. 
creating an arena is very easy. You can get better results by using canvas textures and things of that nature. So even those with very basic Photoshop skills will be able to create decent looking canvases and ring aprons. The turnbuckle pads, ring ropes, arena lighting and arena mats can also be customized. All this is great of course for those who want to spend time creating wrestlers, but I prefer to take shortcuts here and just download characters that others have graciously uploaded to the internet. You don't need the wrestle lab program to download other people's creations by the way, and check it out there's a great selection on offer here. I tried some basic keywords such as wrestling companies, specific wrestlers and even video game characters, and results did come up for most things I was looking for, but I gotta say before moving on, shout out to creators Forsaken710, Big Al and Dark Web Online. It seems like these three guys in particular have kept community creations alive because most, not all, but most decent characters were made by one of these guys. Of course there are other talented creators out there making wrestlers and other wacky stuff, but 9 times out of 10 it was one of these three names that came up when I chose a character I wanted to download. So not only do we get wrestlers from WWE, AEW, WCW and all the rest, we also have quite a lot of fictional characters we can download and even some random inanimate objects, such as a pencil. Yeah, I've always wanted to wrestle as a pencil. Some of the more quirky downloads include Kirby, Big Boo, Vic Viper and a can of Pepsi. So you tell me, what other wrestling game can I beat up a can of Pepsi while playing as Arachnaman? And yes, I fully expect a can of Pepsi to get created in WWE 2K now that I've said that. You get 60 downloads per day in AAW. Once you get your characters you can then create different federations or general categories to put them into. Each federation has its own title belts but honestly they don't mean a whole lot except for tracking stats. And you can also download a few custom arenas to hold your absolutely batshit insane matches in. Just looking at the creations on offer is a lot of fun and the creativity on display is insanely good. One thing I will say though is that some characters like to use specific art styles and some of these art styles don't match up quite well to others. I can see that some have used texture files from WWE and WCW games which completely remove the cell shaded look, so be warned that some characters look way different than others. So you can download all these crazy characters, you can pick guys like All Might against Jushin Lager and Olaf against uh, King Babom. Should give you plenty to sink your teeth into and plenty to experiment with, right? Yeah, you'd think that, but game modes and even match modes are pretty limited in AAW and this presents a problem. While you can have an extensive roster filled with a wide range of real and fictional characters, there just isn't that much you can do with them in the game. Match types are limited, there's loads of multi-man stuff such as triple threat, fatal 4-way, elimination tag, 6, 8 and even 10-man tags are available. An update added a Royal Rumble mode too which I'm sure was very welcome at the time, but there's nothing here in terms of stipulation or gimmick matches. No cage, no ladder, no hell in a cell, no last man standing, no first blood. Basically, you'll be playing single tag elimination or battle royal matches and that's about it I'm afraid. Battle royals and royal rumbles can be fun though, things get hectic with up to 10 guys in the ring at the same time and I find myself having the most fun with these kind of matchups, but I really do wish there was more available. You do have the option of turning weapons on and off, the game doesn't have countouts or disqualifications so you're welcome to break as many rules as possible during standard matches, but still I really would have liked to have seen more match types in AAW. It's a small development team, these things cost a lot of time and I'm sure one issue could easily create another issue, but even two or three gimmick matches in here would have made a big difference. I was excited to try the gauntlet mode and I waited until I got a few matches under my belt before giving it a go, and I was shocked to see that this is basically a create your own arcade mode. You set the matches you want to play, you set the difficulty, and then you play matches that you've selected in order to complete the gauntlet. This is a baffling decision indeed, you're basically creating a set of exhibition matches and nothing more. Again, I don't want to be too harsh and I hate coming across like a dick saying as this isn't the game that was developed by a big studio. This was all created by a few people in what spare time they had and I'm thankful it got released. But AAW really needed more match types to hook people in and it needed a proper single player mode to keep folks playing the game. I honestly think this is why the game never really took off and why it went under the radar for so many wrestling fans. 
The lack of game modes and match types also has a detrimental effect on community creations. As mentioned, there were a few dedicated folk who kept pumping out quality characters for the game, but with so little people actually playing the game and even less playing it as time went on, it seems like the community has all but given up. This is a terrible shame too. If this had caught on, you can bet there would be hundreds of YouTube videos with folks showing off some insane wrestling matches using awesome custom characters. But well, that didn't happen unfortunately. I'm one of those people who can just watch random Mugen matches on YouTube. I love seeing the creativity and I love seeing widely different characters coming together to fight it out. I honestly think that action arcade wrestling had that kind of potential. Really, all I can show you here is match footage and nothing more, so hopefully you get a kick out of seeing some of these bizarre matchups take place in action arcade wrestling. Do I still think this is worth picking up? Absolutely, 100%. It goes on sale all the time and recently it was on sale for under $5, so yeah, pick it up and have some fun downloading characters, there's no reason not to. A concern I have though is that in the future the servers might get closed down and access to uploaded characters might be affected, but I hope the developers find a way around this and they allow characters to be added by other means, kinda like how you can just drag and drop a character folder in Mugen to expand your roster for example. What I would love to see though, and I know this is unlikely, but I would love to see this game get rediscovered and I'd love for people to realise the potential AAW's Wrestle Lab really has. I know folks are making some incredible custom content in the WWE games right now and I also know Action Arcade Wrestling will never compare to the WWE games, but you can do a hell of a lot more with AAW's character models and judging by the creations already available for download, it looks like pretty much anything can be put together in this game. Action Arcade Wrestling was released in 2019, there were game updates happening as late as summer this year. I don't know what the developers have planned for the future but I sincerely hope they realise the potential AAW has as a strictly community driven wrestling game because I honestly think that's where it separates itself from other grapplers currently on the market. Adding a few new match types would be good, but truly expanding the creation suite and showing that anything's possible when it comes to creations is a way forward in my opinion. I knew the Shikara game existed, but it wasn't until I played it in its current state when I realised it had all these insane custom characters. Had I known that, I probably wouldn't have let this one slip under the radar. But I'll let the video play out with a little more match footage. Again, give this one a download, make sure you try out the Wrestle Lab, download my sweet reliving the war arena, and thank you very much for watching this video. Take care.